Welcome back, guys, to Voicey here, and... Wait, who... who are you? We are the Legion of Karen. The what? The Legion of Karen. A force of entitled parents that have been plotting to destroy every staff worker. Until... We've worked our way to talk to every single manager in the world! <laughs> and? What are you doing here? You fool! <laughs> Don't you know humanity's last hope relies on the Voicey Here YouTube channel? Once we've crushed you, there will be no hope. We can have all the bad haircuts we ever dreamed of! Not if I can stop it! What are you gonna do? We've learned the difference between a real and decoy Nintendo Switch. You can't fool us now! You can't do anything! You're just one measly voice actor. That's where you're wrong. I'm not alone. Uh, what? Thanks for holding the fort, Captain Zack. No problem, sir. Did you discover the secret weapon to defeat Karens? I did. Here, take one. The Holy Snips. Scissors that can destroy any Karen's haircut. Of course. <laughs> the source of their power. That's right. Now, let's cut loose. No! <laughs> We were so close to overtaking all of humanity! Curse you, Voicey Here YouTube channel! Welcome back, guys, to Voicey Here and another r slash entitled parents. Don't forget, Voicey veterans, to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story was called, Entitled Mother Wants Everyone to Speak English, in Mexico. In the middle of September, I went to Cancun for holidays with my mum. We're Mexican, so my first language is not English from a city a bit far away from there. Here's the cast for this drama scene. Entitled mother, e.g. poor mate who just wanted to know how we wanted our eggs. Me and my mum. So here goes the scene. We were staying at a really fancy hotel. My grandmother paid the room and plane for us in celebration of my 18th birthday, and we really wanted to make the most of it. This obviously meant that they had a lot of foreign people staying, so most of the hotel was managed in English. Everything was great. We got a nice view of the sea and wanted to do a lot of things. Now, my skin is quite sensitive to the sun. I get real red real fast. So we went to swim before breakfast. This is when we got the first encounter with EM. She was a normal looking lady, not even had a Karen haircut. Her and her two sons, both around 8 to 10 years old, were staying in a room two doors from mine. So when we went out to the lift, we saw them doing the same. My mum greeted politely, buenos dias, and seeing she didn't answer, assuming that she was from another place, corrected to good morning. And gosh, the look on her face. She looked offended and just nodded in return. She decided to take the stairs instead, even though she had a lot of things from her kids in her hands. Now, I'm a big advocate that there is no way to look Mexican, but my family is a weird Arabic-Japanese mix from three generations ago, and you really couldn't tell by eye where we are from. This is gonna be important later. We went swimming on the beach and everything was cool. No bad encounters. I even made conversation with a German girl and my friend with hers. A bit later we went to the main canteen to eat breakfast. It was a darn big place full of food, half traditional Mexican food and the other with more international plates. And as much as I love waffles in the morning, I was feeling a bit more like chilaquiles with eggs. They had this guy making the eggs. You just went near the counter. He asked you how you wanted them, and he made them for you. That simple. We stand in queue just a couple people away from our turn. And what do we find? That lady from earlier coming right behind us. This guy had really broken English. But it wasn't such a problem since we just really needed to know how the different egg styles were named. His English would improve with the time working there. Good morning, how you want your eggs? Revioltos, por favor. The guy sighed in relief. Gosh knows how many times had passed since he last spoke in Spanish. Coming, ma'am. It's been a while since the last time someone from here appeared. It's low season. EM touched my mother's shoulder. I'm sorry, but can you speak English? Most of us do, so you should as well, you know. Do not make anything awkward. My mum feels uncomfortable speaking in English, so I answered. I'm sorry if it bothers you, ma'am, but if it's easier for him to speak in his own language, and we can help, we will. Wow, rude. It's his job to know English, but not ours to know Spanish. We won't talk to you in Spanish, don't worry. But right now we aren't speaking to you. 
Just don't speak Spanish at all while there's people. I'm really sorry, but we have the right to speak any language we want. Well, at least speak your own language and don't ridicule the rest of us for speaking English. And my language would be... <coughs> How would I know, Korean? Now for the record, not me nor my mum look a bit Korean. I don't know where she got that. Yes, we look a bit East Asian, but not Korean. Ma'am, Spanish is my and my mother's language. We aren't trying to ridicule you. We're just asking for scrambled eggs. See? She raised her voice. It was that simple for you to ask for eggs in English. Next time, do it for a start. We were done and just turned around. The eggs were already served. My mum to E.G. Muchos gracias. Thank you very much. I would want another too. Fried for my daughter, please. He looked at the E.M. and said, Claro, senorito. Of course, miss. While cracking the eggs. This happens a lot more often than you expect. Americans get really weird. E.M. walked away and we thought we were saving her from yelling until a few moments later when we were already out of the queue and she was back with the manager. It was him. He didn't want to cook my eggs if I didn't ask for them in Spanish. Is that true? E.G. was frozen, so I stepped in. It's not true. She wanted us to speak English at force. It wasn't even her turn yet. She says you wanted them to speak in English. Well, as it should be, they have nothing to do speaking in Spanish here. The manager looking so resigned. Sorry, there's nothing I can do against that. They're staying here just as you are and can speak anything they please. If you wish, there's another person making eggs at the other side of the buffet. What an unprofessional place. I want you to know that me and my family are not coming back. We're sorry to hear. Enjoy the rest of your stay. He was so done. Goodness knows how many people like her he's dealt with. Long story short, she just stayed one more day and was always looking at us like we were some kind of bug, whispering things to her children while directly staring. Did we care? Not really. I can understand that if you only know English and you're invited as an English-speaking guest to a place, that you would expect others to speak back in English to you. That doesn't give you the right to make everyone speak just your language, especially in a foreign country. Wouldn't it be expected to make like a little bit of an effort to speak that language? This story was called Entitled Mother Wants Child Labor. In my town, we have youth services in the summer and winter breaks. Basically, it's lower priced teams, activity groups, or day trips for kids who can't go to camps because their family's financial issues. My neighbor, EM, a mother of three, who also lives off a trust fund left by her late husband, who didn't father her kids, called them up one day about a decade ago. I was in the youth services office when the call came in. The office is across the street from both of us, and sort of heard EM's side later in the story. Hello, I'm calling about youth services. Yes, how can I be of assistance? I'm on a fixed income and mother of three. I was hoping you could recommend services for help. Oh sure, can I take your name and ask what you may be looking for? I'm name redacted and I would like my house cleaned three times a week. I also have a son who has autism and requires a specialist to come over daily if possible. And I've been wanting a new back deck for my children so they can play outside more. I assume this is all covered as I'm a taxpayer? I'm sorry, we don't provide services like that. We sponsor teams or group trips to kids and teens from families who can't afford private services. And we do charge a reduced rate based off income. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought these were services provided by kids and teens in town. No, no. Sorry for the confusion. Well, that said, can you send over some teens to pull out my old deck and start building a new one? That'd be a good start as my daughter has a birthday in two weeks and I'd like to have it completed by then. Ma'am, you don't understand. We don't employ children to do work for town residents, especially construction. Now on speakerphone and I recognize the voice. What good are you? I've already promised my daughter a surprise for her birthday and my son is special needs. Did you hear me about that? Why can't you send a group over and at least get it started? And how hard is it for some snot-nosed kid to hold a broom to clean my house? Ma'am, we don't do that. We can't provide one-on-one -on -one special needs attention for your son. We don't have children from poor income families clean houses. And we certainly don't recommend teens build you a new deck because you promised your daughter. I'm sorry, we can't help you in this way. This is outrageous. What are my taxes even paying for? Click. This EM complained about it for weeks. I heard about it when I was washing my car and she asked me to wash hers as well, to which I declined. 
That's the problem with young people today. They don't do anything. And then spouted off this latest offense. Me laughing hard. I knew it was you. Do you think kids are going to clean your house just because you pay taxes? I pay taxes too. Do you see any kids helping me out for the experience? She went inside, slamming the door angrily. Imagine being so ignorant that you thought a youth services program was designed to take disadvantaged kids and instead of helping them, they use those kids to help you, what, build a deck for your daughter? I love how they always have a time frame as well. It's like, oh yeah, I need it done in two weeks, so chop chop. This story was called, EM Tries to Kick Me, Ends Up in an Ambulance. This happened a few days ago. I had gone on my usual shopping with help from the staff. As the manager is a friend of my mother, they were dinner ladies in my old school, and got along pretty well, became friends. And so I always ask the manager if anyone is free. I would appreciate the help as I feel nervous being by myself due to my autism. Well, while I was shopping, an entitled mum kept trying to steal stuff from my trolley while I was comparing prices on products so I can last longer with my budget. I managed to catch the EM a few times, and I asked why she is taking stuff I was buying. She said this, You can always get replacements, stop complaining. I start getting stressed and breaking down as the EM starts ripping into me about my stutter. Here are a few of the things she said. Stop talking, you're like a broken record. Are you retarded? You need help to talk, you're pathetic. I start sobbing and the manager is called over the radio. The Karen is told to leave me alone, and that if she kept bothering me, she'd be banned for harassing a disabled girl. Karen calls Teresa the N-word and a snitch and leaves. I manage to get myself together after Teresa and the manager help me calm down. Teresa gets approval from the manager to run my trolley through to get my stuff on the shopping list. I always make a list before I get on the bus to the shop, while the manager kept me company at the customer service tills. Teresa came back after about 5 minutes and helped me run the items through the checkout, with the manager taking 10% off my total as a discount for not losing my temper at the EM we encountered earlier. A taxi was called for me and I waited outside in the parking area, next to where the old blockbuster used to be. I still miss that place. Teresa comes out to make sure I'm doing okay. My eyes were a bit puffy and my face a bit red. The EM from earlier comes up to the parking area, apparently waiting for her boyfriend, and spots me. You! She screeches in a pitch so bad my ears were ringing. You little bee! You caused me so much freaking trouble tonight! I'm gonna F you up! What she forgot was that I was sitting, leaning on the edge of the pole things on the edges of the parking areas. As soon as I moved when she went to swing a kick at me, a crunch was heard. She broke her freaking foot. I started laughing at how stupid she was for doing that, and Teresa scolded me, telling me that while it was a little bit funny, it wasn't the right time to laugh. The EM is screaming for help and crying assault. An ambulance was called for her and she screamed that she would see me in court. I start losing it a bit due to stress making my emotion go haywire, and am pulled away further down the parking area while she is treated to first aid while waiting for the ambulance. The ambulance takes her away with police being called as well. The manager had shown the police the CCTV footage of the parking area, showing all I did was dodge her. The EM tried kicking me. The police chuckled a bit and asked to talk to me. I got help to call my aunt, who we'll call Mandy, and she got the report from the manager. Mandy became my appropriate adult, I think it is called. She helped me answer questions when I struggled to get my words out. Police were done in about 10 minutes. Mandy offered to take me home instead of paying for a taxi. I felt guilty about the taxi, but said yes. I hugged the manager and climbed in the back of Mandy's car after loading my bags into the boot or trunk. I love my Auntie Mandy. There ain't nothing better than when an EM causes their own destruction. It's great because then you don't have to do any of the work, it just all happens for you. To be fair, they are the cause of like 90% of all the problems in their life anyway, so it's almost inevitable that it's bound to happen sooner or later. This story was called, Entitled Family Steals From Us and Makes the Mistake of Trying to Blame Us. They get in a lot of crap. Some backstory. I was six when this happened, and I was pretty good friends with the daughter of the entitled parents at the time. Daughter was pretty entitled as well. I had six dolls in a box I kept them in, that I was pretty attached to. I had gotten them over a span of 2.5 years. EK played at our house quite a lot, so I didn't expect this to happen at all. Onto the story. In the cast is me, my dad, my mum, entitled dad, entitled mum, entitled kid, and police officer. It was summer, and I asked my parents if EK could come over. They said yes. A few minutes later, EM and EK arrived. 
EM started chatting with my parents and EK and me went to play in the backyard. I proudly opened my box of dolls. EK and I both took some dolls and played pretend. Skipped when EK had to leave. This is what I remember the conversation being like. It could be a little off. Can I keep this doll? I really like it. No, sorry. I don't want to give any of them to others. But you have so many more. One doll won't make a difference. Please give my doll back. I'd been taught that being rude was a big no-no. So I was very polite, no matter how rude the other was. Mom! EM comes running, looks at us and turns to me. What did you do to my sweetie? I want all these dolls. Tell her they're mine now. Okay, sweetie. Then towards me. Those dolls are hers now. Give them to me. No, they're mine. Give them back. Shut it, brat. Give me those freaking dolls. I froze. I got scared and started crying. My parents heard this and walked to us. They see EK and me both crying. What's going on here? Your idiot kid hit my baby! What? I highly doubt that. My kid doesn't hit other children. Unless she has a reason. Why don't we ask both of them what happened? She said I could have all her dolls, but now she's saying I can't have them! If my angel wants them, she gets them! I never said you could have them. You wanted to take them without permission. EM loses it to me. Shut your freaking mouth, you ungrateful! I started bawling. I can't handle yelling or angry people well, and the automatic reflex is to start crying. Both my parents are angry and are talking to Yam on how she can't just make me cry and act like it's not her fault. Meanwhile, EK has put all the dolls back in the box, but she didn't leave then. She took the box and all the dolls and runs away. My parents ran after them, but they were already inside their own home. They lived in our street. We knew where they lived. So my dad, who was furious, goes to ring their doorbell. Entitled Dad opens the door. Yes? Give those dolls back. They are my daughter's dolls. What dolls? I have no idea what you're talking about. He effing smirks and then slams the door in my dad's face. My dad, who is fuming, comes back home. He calls the police. Not soon after, the police are asking my parents what happened. A police officer walks towards me and kneels down. Can you tell me what happened, little one? My best friend stole my dolls and her mum yelled at me for not wanting to give them to her. Then they ran away with my dolls. Thank you, little one. We'll get your dolls back, okay? I nodded. After asking us what they wanted to know, the police went to the entitled home. From this part on, I wasn't actually present, but my parents told me what happened. They ring the doorbell and EM opens the door. Seeing the police with my parents behind them, she begins yelling at my mum. OMG, not again! How many times must I tell you you are not getting my angel's toys? We were told your child and you stole a box of dolls from these people? That's not true! They're my daughter's dolls, we bought them last week! Their daughter wants the dolls all for herself and her parents have been trying to get them from us for the whole week! May I see the receipt then? If you really bought them you should have a receipt. EM's face loses all color. My dad loved this part. He told me he couldn't believe this woman didn't know that this would happen. <clears throat> well, we lost the receipt, so well, we can't show you. The police officers, there were three if I remember correctly, looked at each other, clearly not believing it. My mum grins and taps one of the officers on the shoulder. The dolls haven't been bought all at once. We have all the separate receipts for them though. If you look at the dolls and the receipts, you should have enough proof that the dolls are ours. The police accept this offer. EM was forced to get the dolls that instant. And of course, the receipts showed the truth. EM looked furious. EK was crying as she saw her newly obtained toys disappear. ED sees all this and tries to blackmail my dad. Where do you get those toys? That man has stolen multiple things in the past. Those receipts must be stolen or forged. The police looks from ED to my dad. That is completely irrelevant right now. But if you want a separate case, we can check all of your records. EM turns pale after hearing this and tries to shush her husband. But he has already yelled, do that. My parents went home to me. Don't worry, I wasn't left home alone. My babysitter was quickly dialed in between, so I wasn't alone. And I think about a week passes. After that week of peace, we hear police sirens. I, curious as I am, run to the front door and open it. I saw both EM and ED being cuffed. And EK was taken by what turned out to be child support. Apparently, EM and ED had done a lot of bad stuff. EM had apparently committed theft three times. 
and had been arrested before due to mistreating about four freaking animals and two children. ED had been committing all kinds of fraud and apparently had all kinds of unpaid fines. I never saw any of them ever again. Not exactly the kind of people you want to live on the same street with. It kind of sucks that you can't really choose your neighbours. I mean, you can choose where you originally move into, but apart from that, somebody else moves in who's a total terror. Yeah, not much you can do about that. Post your stories, memes, and fan art at r slash voicey here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright, voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.